Hi, I had a problem with my bathroom tap. I was avoiding doing anything about it, just living with the leak, but it got worse and I couldn't ignore it. As I worked on it, I realized this could be a great opportunity to tell you about finding a difference between superstition and religion. I wouldn't call myself very handy, and if you're familiar with plumbing, you know getting under a sink isn't all that fun. You never really know what you might find, what someone did 30 years ago. It might be a real mess, and you can make things a lot worse if you're not careful. I got lucky, it wasn't too bad. But if you want your bathroom to work, you have to know when to make some changes and what changes to make. Now, I understand, it can be real easy today to say religion is just superstition. I've said it myself. But if you dig a little deeper with the spirit of inquiry, you can find something more valuable than just knee-jerk evaluations. I'm going to borrow something here from Northrop Fry. Northrop Fry was in some ways a real traditional old school teacher. He thought of himself as an apocalyptic thinker. But if you look at him, well, you might think the only thing apocalyptic about him might be his hair. I'll use that word, apocalyptic, in scare quotes. Do I mean the end of the world? Well, that depends on what you mean by end. Depends on what you mean by world. Getting up for work. Turning on the bathroom faucet. Updating your computer, whatever. How much water have you used today? Let's say you wanted to have a shower and discovered your tap didn't work. Would that feel like the end of the world? Or imagine you turned the tap and it fell off. Suddenly you had a whole lot of water everywhere out of control. Is that an apocalyptic moment? For Fry, the word apocalypse suggested that a change was needed on some level. Something no longer worked, but it revealed something else. And for Fry, this idea of apocalypse made up the core difference between superstition and religion. Here's another way to think about it. For Fry, superstition meant doing the same things in the same ways, because you want to get the same results. Fry even suggested that human dignity depended on this kind of thing. You need to be able to comfortably predict the outcomes of your actions. You need routines, habits, otherwise chaos, frustration, nothing works. In the bathroom, you don't get clean, you don't fix your hair, you just get soaked, your house gets wrecked. You feel lost and you don't know what to expect. Your neurotic side wants to take over. At one point, I was tempted to take a crowbar to the old faucet. There are levels to your apocalypse. So what about religion then? For Fry, religion means doing the same things in the same ways until you no longer get the desired results. See the difference there. In this sense, religion recognizes that things will change around you, whether you want them to change or not. The tap will stop working. The paychecks might dry up. Wisdom teachings can be read from two different camps. There is a wise voice guiding people to the prudent course. Do the same things in the same ways if you want the same results. But there is also the wise voice for the pragmatic course. At some point it won't work. You need a strategy. Prepare to abandon the old ways that no longer work and find something new. Wisdom then is the art of knowing when to change and what to change. That can be something as simple as having a toolbox ready when the plumbing no longer works or maintaining those things you find valuable. Otherwise, you won't be prepared for the apocalypse and problems might get bigger, wetter, messier. When you think of religious people, one stereotype is that they are really resistant to change. Tradition, ceremony, prudence, all seem like important religious themes. But there is another side to religious people. For example, many movements for social change have religious roots, or at least they used to. If we were going to be generous, we could say that the better parts of religion are supposed to prepare people with the courage to know when to change and know what needs to change. Vital reform over violent revolt. Developmental adaptation over dramatic apocalypse. But that's if we're generous. Perhaps if we weren't so generous, we would dig in our heels. Religion is still just superstition. Old ways just lead to inaction or violent reaction. 
Does religion today have the tools to handle the waves of new information available? Is it the practice of wisdom, encouraging followers to change their minds at the right time? Maybe people won't change their minds about these words. Okay, how about we get past the words? How about we just think about those two different attitudes, the two different courses you can take? What routines do you have? Do you do the same thing the same way each time in order to get the same intended results? And what do you do when the same thing, the same way, no longer gets you the same intended results? Do you have a mental toolbox ready to change what needs to be changed? It took me a long time to finally face up to my bathroom apocalypse, and I'm very lucky to have a patient wife willing to let me manage these little jobs on my own time. But I'm still figuring out this fine art of wisdom and sorting out the tools in my toolbox. We'll get to some more tools in other videos, but for now, I encourage you to find a difference between your superstitions and your religions. Time to face up to the next apocalypse. Cheers.